all right welcome back now today we're going to be looking at um electric currents meaning we're going to be looking at current electricity things I would have mentioned earlier to you is that what is electricity and you know that electricity basically is the movement of electric charges So electricity is the movement of an electric charge or electric charges um, around an unbroken conductor, basically, right? Now, we want to relate that to um, looking at electric current. Now, at this point, you're going to find out that electric current is a flow of electric charge. Or, um, to be specific, it will be referred to as the rate of flow of electric charge. Good? So that's the next point you're going to look at there. That electric current. It is utilizing the symbol of capital I. It is the rate of flow. Good. So, what we just mentioned there is that electricity is the movement of these electric charges, right? The movement of these electric charges around an unbroken conductor. Now, electric current, on the other hand, is the rate at which these electric charges flow. The rate at which these electric charges um, can flow through that conductor. Good? So, it's like thinking about um, a water flow into a hose. Now, the, the, that hose is the, the total um, unbroken conductor. Good? The water flowing in, in, in the hose, on the other hand, is the electric charges that can flow. So, measuring the, the rate at which the water can flow through the hose is basically finding the electric current. Okay? So, that is what we want to be looking at at this point in time. Now, given the definition of electric current, we're going to realize that it's the rate of flow of electric charges. And as you previously mentioned, what you know, anytime you see the word rate, it is referring to per unit time. Good? Just remember that. Always remember that. Once you look at rate, it means per unit time. So it's the rate of flow of electric charge. So basically, it gives us a formula. That electric charge is equal to um, electric current, sorry, is electric charge per unit time divided by time. So it gives us that I is equal to Q over. So that's the general formula for electric current. Very basic. Good? So we get that I is equal to Q over T. Good? I'll write it over here. I equals Q over T. Good? So that's the formula for electric charge. Now, given this formula, it means that we can rearrange it to find any one of those unknown values. We can find it. Um, what is, you can find what is um, electric charge and realize that Q is equal to IT. And that T as well can be found by saying Q over I. Good? So therefore, in a triangle notation, realize that I Q upon T. Good? So it helps us to find out any one of these unknowns that Q is equal to IT 
and that T is equal to Q over I and I is equal to Q over, over T. Okay, so this breaks down the, the use of the, the formula there. Now, just so you to mention, um, what I would have mentioned in the notes that you have is that electric current is measured in amperes. That's the SI unit of electric current. So, the SI unit for electric current is amperes, which uses the symbol of capital A. Electric unit for the quantity electric charge is known as coulombs, which uses the symbol C. And for time, the SI unit is second. Alright, so if we realize that um, amperes is also referred to as coulombs per second, right? Amperes is also referred to as coulombs per second. Good? So, in you know, the then, because given the formula I is equal to Q over T, where charge is measured in coulombs and time is measured in seconds, so coulombs divided by seconds gives us unit of coulombs per second, which is equivalent to an ampere. Good. So one ampere is equivalent to um, coulombs per second. Alright, now we're back down to electricity and electric current. Now we see that electricity is the movement of the electric charge around an unbroken path. Now what we're going to find out is that um, a conductor is a material that allows um, charge to fluctuate, whereas an insulator is a material that does not allow um, charge to fluctuate. Now the movement of these charges is what we want to determine, that there are different ways in which a charge can fluctuate a conductor. And in, um, in the syllabus, you're going to realize that there are two different um, methods that they talk about. You have one specified as known as electron flow. And the other one specified as um, conventional current direction. Now we're going to differentiate between the two. Now, as the name suggests, with electron flow, alright? Let's say we have an unbroken conducting path, like let's say a circuit. We have a simple circuit, we want to understand the movement of the charge around that circuit. Now we talk about electron flow. Electron flow simply signifies the movement of electrons around that, around that, um, around that circuit. So electron flow. is the direction in which electrons move. Alright? So, it's the direction in which electrons move around a conductor. And I, I'm going to draw a simple circuit for you. I'm going to draw a simple circuit for you to see. Alright, so let's say we have a, a bulb here and we have an ammeter here and at this point we're going to put a switch. Good. So here we have the power source. It's two dry cells, the long stroke represents the positive, the short stroke represents the negative. So it's in the positive and that's the negative. Alright, so just remember that the long stroke of the battery represents the positive, the short stroke represents the negative. Good? Now, what we want to understand here is the battery source is the main power where electricity comes from, the movement, the, this, the um, potential difference between the batteries. So, electron flow now represents the movement of negative charges, right? So these movements of electric negative charges come from the, the battery, from the negative side of the battery and flow around the circuit. 
So if we were to close this circuit, that the negative charges are going to flow from the negative side of the battery around around that, that circuit until it goes up back and meets the positive side of the battery. So negative. So in terms of identifying the polarity of everything in the circuit now, if this is negative, then this side of the switch is positive, that's negative. Then it becomes positive, that's negative, positive, negative, and then back to the positive nature of it. Right? Because in a series circuit, a simple, everything is connected, positive, negative. So positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so forth. Okay? So, so that is one is electron flow. Right, so the next um, next one we're going to look at is the conventional current direction, right? Where conventional current direction basically move, looks at the movement of positive charges, right? So electron flow looks at the movement of negative charges or the movement of electrons. Now, conventional current direction, as it is said, conventional, meaning basically it perceived that it perceives as if um, positive charges are the ones that actually moves around the circuit. Right, so that is that is the direction in which everything is actually um, is actually learned that way. That it perceived to be the movement of positive charges. Good. So let's just write that one, that one down. Right. So as I have here is that um, conventional current direction is the movement of um, positive charges around a conductor. That this is the direction current is perceived to be moving in. Right. This is the direction in which current is perceived to be moving in. So like if, if I give you a simple circuit again, just to illustrate it. So. If we have a positive, a battery, a positive side and a negative side, a simple circuit, and it goes around to meet a bulb and an ammeter, and back around to a switch, leave the switch open, leave the switch open there, and then we close it off. Now, in terms of polarity, polarity refers to the different poles, whether a positive pole or a negative pole when we hook up our components. So, in a simple circuit, everything is connected positive, negative, positive, negative, meaning from positive to negative, positive to negative. So, in this case, we have if this side is negative, then this side of the switch is going to be positive, and this side is going to be negative. And for the ammeter, it goes from negative down to a positive side, then the other side will be negative, and negative goes to positive, and this is negative, and then goes back to the positive side of the battery. Good? So, that is what we're going to see there. Good? Now, what we say that conventional current direction is the direction in which current is perceived to be moving in, which is the movement of the positive charges. So basically, the positive charges are going to come from the positive side of the battery. Good? So in this case, this represents the conventional current direction, so the movement of the positive charges. Right, so this is the conventional current direction here. 
So the positive charge is moving from the positive all around to the negative once we close that switch, right? It's an, an unbroken path. So we, we close the switch and it goes all the way around. Good? So that is referred to as the conventional current direction. Alright? Good. So that introduces um, the direction in which um, current is perceived to be moving in or current moves. Good. So we, we already what we just learned there is that electric um, electricity is the movement of electric charge. However, um, electric current is the rate at which that movement occurs. Good. So that is what we first want to introduce there. The electric current is the rate at which that movement occurs. So it gives us a formula that I is equal to Q over T. Good. I is equal to Q over T. Good. Where Q represents um, electric charge and T represents time. Now, to add to that, we're going to realize now um, that there are different types of, um, let, let's um, be specific there, that different types of um, current that you have what is known as alternating current and you have what is known as direct current. Good? So let me just quickly mention that to you. Right, so you have what is known as direct current, otherwise you call it as DC, right? DC. Good. Now, what direct current is is current that can um, that only travels in one direction. This is current that only travels in one direction in a, in a conductor, right? Um, otherwise stated, given a textbook, a textbook might tell you it is current that does not change direction with time. A current that does not change direction with time. So basically, this current is only flowing one direction in a conducting path. So let's say we have a conducting path here. So it means that the electrons are only going to flow in this direction only. Good? So the electrons here only flow in this direction. This is the case of direct current. Good? So when you talk about um, direct current is mainly found due to batteries, like um, current generated from a battery cell or um, dry cell, um, that this current only goes from the, from um, in the case of conventional current direction, it only goes from the positive around this circuit back to the negative side. Good? It only goes from positive to negative. Right? So that is the case of direct current. Now direct current can be um, illustrated in many different ways other than in this, with this diagram. It can be illustrated on a graph. Let's say we wanted to look at um, the, the current um, reading per, per time on a graph. So if we're given a graph, a current versus time graph. Now direct current is only illustrated one way, right? Now, whether it is a current time graph or a voltage time graph, a voltage versus time, that it can only be illustrated one way, meaning that the graph is only going to be in one quadrant alone. One quadrant means that it only stays in one direction. So if we have a graph looking like this, so if you have like a pen battery, pen like battery, that gives you 1.5 volts. Good. So if you have a pen light battery that gives you 1.5 volts, that this will be the graph illustrating a pen light battery. That it only gives you 1.5 volts as time goes by. So this is time. In seconds, as time goes by, the reading is always 1.5. 
So the value never comes down into this part of the quadrant. This is zero. So down here is negative, the negative value. So it's really, it's really negative 1.5. But the reading will never come down here. Okay? This illustrates a DC current. Now, it's a case where, suppose you have a, a power source that, that carries the value up and then brings it down in terms of you alternate, um, you change in the voltage. Alright? That value goes up and comes down. Goes up and comes down. This is still direct current. The reason this is still direct current is because this value never goes below this center line. There is no reading below here to say that it is a negative voltage reading. Okay? So even though the graph is different, that you could have a graph looking like this. Good. That there is no negative portion. This is still direct current. So all these illustrations that I'm showing you here, they represent direct current because there is no negative portion of, of the graph. And as I always mention that in order to illustrate the difference in direction, we use a negative sign or positive sign. So because there's no negative value, it means that it, the current never goes in a negative direction. Good? It always stays in the positive direction. So it always goes in one direction. Good? So that's why it is reported as direct current. It never goes back. It's always going forward in whichever way. Okay? The next type of current that we want to know is alternating current. Otherwise, we go to an AC. AC. Now, this type of current is current that repeatedly reverses direction with time. Good. It repeatedly reverses direction with time. Now, what does that mean? It means that at any given period of time, the current can change direction. Once it can be going this way, then in another second it can be going that way. It could be changing direction over and over continuously repeatedly basically so it can travel in any direction around any conducting path good so if we have a conducting path here at some point the electron can be going this way while another electron can be going that way good they can be changing direction repeatedly good that is due to the change in polarity so there is something causing a change in polarity at one point this point can be positive and, and this over here negative and then another second it can change that this one becomes negative and then this one becomes positive good so they can change poles repeatedly every um, um, different second good now how can we illustrate this on a graph we're going to see same concept good? so if you have a voltage time graph or current time graph so let's say we have a voltage time graph and a Seconds, zero. So in this case, you're using voltage time graph again. Same concept if we have a current time graph. So a voltage time graph in this case, we want to show that the vo um, the charges are going in both directions as time goes by repeatedly. Good. So in this case, this type of graph is going to be covering the two quadrants here. It's going to be looking at the quadrant one and, and quadrant four here. Good? So, this type of graph will look like as time goes by. Right? As time goes by, you're going to see that it goes from one quadrant down to the next quadrant. Good? Whether it looks like this or you have a uh, a square graph. Once the graph shows that we enter the two quadrants, it is referred to that it is an alternating current. Okay? So what if it looks like this? Uh, let me do one, one final one. Exactly. But it looks like that as well. It should be referred to as uh, alternating current. Good. 
all of these represent that it is doing alternating current. Okay? Now, once we introduce graphs to you, we will have to be able to um, know how to manipulate any question that refers to the use of a graph or use of a wave. Good? Now, in this case, we would have learned about waves before where we looked at the period of a wave. For instance, For instance, if we have an alternating, alternating wave that looks like this, good, and the alternating wave that based on this, you can ask a number of questions. Um, based on this graph and then I could ask you what is the period of this um, of this wave right the period of this wave or I could ask you what is the frequency of this wave right so from there we can introduce um, the use of the formulas that frequency is equal to 1 over period where period t is the time taken to complete one wave and you can identify that one wave which starts here and ends at this point is equal to 0 0.2 seconds. So we realize that frequency is going to be equal to 1 over 0 0.2 seconds. Remember to always pay attention to the unit that is given here. Always pay attention to this unit. Whether it be seconds or milliseconds or whatever, we realize that is how we get our answer here. So 1 divided by 0 0.2 seconds gives you an answer of um, 5 foot. Good? Alright, so you realize that the frequency of this wave is 5 hertz. Good? Giving you that 5, five waves are occurring in the, in, the, in the 1 second. Okay? So, that concludes this session. We'll pick up um, the next session where we're going to be looking at the calculation of voltage right so we learned about electric current now we're going to be learning about voltage and then um, electrical power and so forth and then go into looking at the use of transformers and so